Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we've got another installment of the Hot Take series where uh, I went on and asked for your hot takes and your uh, spicy opinions on some things, and we're going to talk about them right now. I just don't get the hype around Anima's music. Yeah, there's a few great tracks, but so many are just boring. Not only boring, but technically wise, so plain. I get the visuals help a ton, but damn. Uh, yeah, I agree with this for the most part, I must say. Um, I think there's this weird explosion of techno right now. I wouldn't say weird, but, um, techno is just exploding in the space. And, uh, like, even the fact that Enema's got, uh, a Sphere, um, residency where he's in Las Vegas. And I get that that's mainly due to his visuals because, um, the Sphere is, 90% <laughs> of what it is, is a, is a visual spectacular or a spectacle. And so, um, yeah, I get why he was chosen to do like a Vegas residency for that but um I like I agree like I think a lot of the sounds are just the same a lot of the songs sound the same uh and it kind of hits this weird niche that I think will be a fad that um we will see die in the next couple years actually I, I would be shocked by um the end of uh his residency anyone's re re residency in Vegas that um the genre will be like dead uh, would be my guess for the most part so um yeah it, it, this weird kind of explosion but uh we talk about that in fads all the time where um we're like oh this is this is crazy and then we look back and we're like oh that was a weird fad that happened and i think it'll be the same with techno boss fight especially with the recent releases is possibly the best artist in monster cat history um, this is just an opinion, uh, obviously, as a lot of these are, as your hot takes and spicy opinions, um, best artist in Monster Cat history, uh, uh, there's maybe a case for that. Uh, not gonna lie, like there's there's a case for it. Um, there's a case for a lot of artists. Um, I think you gotta uh, put into consideration longevity. I think you gotta like variety. Um, I think there's a lot of stuff you gotta take in consideration if you're considered the like best monster cat artist of all time, which again is almost entirely subjective. Um, I love, but like Stonebank, Pegboard Nerds, uh, Tristam even, um, Conroe even, I think has like, he's been a mainstay in the roster for such a long time. Even some more chill out artists like a uh, director or Fijuiji that have been around for an eternity. Um, and so I, I, my guess is you just, uh, <laughs> really enjoy boss fight sound and, uh, he's great. And I, and I love his stuff. And I think, um, again, this is, this is just a personal preference. I actually enjoyed EDM way more before I knew the differences between genres and subgenres. I used to just base it off whether I liked the song, but now it feels like I have an internal bias whether I notice that a song is of a certain genre. That, not that it always is that way, it just almost makes me like it less. Um, I understand the sentiment a lot, and I'm actually really f like happy to get to talk about something like this because um, I've noticed that change in myself starting this channel. Um, when I was a more casual uh, listener of music in general, specifically EDM music, um, to when I became more of a like critic style and sort of reviewing stuff more intentionally and purposeful, um, there's a lot more I took into consideration and a lot more internal processing that I had to do when listening to music that I didn't typically do before. Uh, one of those things was genre and it was thinking about a genre and I do like have to agree with this for the most part I understand the sentiment that this sort of less you know about a song the more you can enjoy it to some extent we're like oh it doesn't matter who wrote this song or who's got a production feature or who the artist even is like if you just had a blind test um, and a blind listen to every song in the world then you'll know clearly and truly what you like with no biases whatsoever I understand that sentiment actually quite a bit and it, it is a struggle though um because the more like when I specifically want to be critical of something, I need to really take those things into consideration. And I think it's okay to also not, if you want to just like sort of casually listen to music and just not care about the individual artists on it, not, not necessarily care about, but not like be like, so like, Oh, this, by this no, I'm not going to like it kind of thing. Um, also not a great thing to do, but, um, like it just, like you can listen to music that way. You don't have to like really care about subgenres. And I understand that there's eras where people, I think a lot of people in particular in the monster cat community um, went through this like subgenre era where they were like, Oh, everything. I know all these intricate subgenres and this is some festival commercial house. And this is some uh, dark techno. And this is some like, uh, like Moombaton versus Moomba core, like all this like random stuff like that. And I went through that phase as well too. And I like agree again, still like, I, I think my appreciation, 
appreciation for music became different in that sense. I think there are times I was maybe more critical or more immediately hesitant or immediately more um, uh, available, like mentally to to like something, uh, knowing what the genre was. And I do think generally genres maybe um, should go away to some extent. Like I like the idea of classifying music, especially for like DJ stuff um, and playlists. But uh, for the most part, like just listen to what you enjoy. Don't care about genre. Don't care about artists, like care about the artists and sense that like follow them and enjoy them and, and, and uh, be on their socials and stuff. But um, uh, don't like necessarily be too wrapped up about who's making each song and kind of just enjoy the music for the way it is. The UK European bass music scene is way more authentic and creative than the US bass music scene. This is an interesting one because I think I kind of agree with it. Um, and I agree with it because I think for the most part, this is like a North American problem in general with a lot of media where um, sometimes and often America is late to the game in terms of what they do uh, and turn it into the more, the most, I would say, commercialized sound and or style of something. I think of um, movies uh, where like even Westerns uh, came from uh, like old samurai films from Japan, um, a bunch of like uh, like a lot of the movies of like action movies of today of uh, like the modern action like Avengers style movies came from uh, early like anime stuff from also like Asia. Like there's just a lot of different inspiration comes from a lot of different places and the US in, t in general, or I would say North America, I'm from Canada, um, does a good job of taking it and making it more commercialized and making it more for a mass appeal. And um, I think music is similar in that sense. Uh, I don't think it's like vastly different. I do think the EU scene also like is more um, forgiving and or more uh, open to experimentation and different sounds and different like musical cultures. I think um, the EU for the most part does a good job of, of being more inclusive to the EDM space and being like, oh no, this sound is uh, like unique and interesting and there's a spot for that here. And I don't think um, that's as prevalent in the US, I think. I think the U.S. is very streamlined and very mainstream with um, this is a certain sound that you need to hit. Uh, and that's what will do numbers and do well because it's all about the American dream of, um, of making lots of money and living a prosperous life and retiring when you're 60, which will not happen for me, I think so. Um, but yeah, that's a sad way to end that. But yeah, I, for the most part, I, uh, I, I think, uh, yes, I, I generally agree. Coconut Mall is easily the most overrated Mario Kart song. Everyone treats it as an untouchable masterpiece, even though it's just a good song. Maybe it has to do with the fact that it grew off of me because I never <laughs> listened to this song religiously. Uh, also by S <laughs> SNES Mario Circuit 3. Um, yeah, uh, like, no. Coconut Mall is not the most overrated Mario Kart song. Um, Coconut Mall is iconic and classic, and um, it goes with an already iconic and classic track design. Um, Coconut Mall is, is just, it is. It is quintessential peak Mario Kart in both its music and um, track layout. And uh, if you think otherwise, uh, you're a hater. You just got coconut mold. I'll probably never understand how music fanatics have as much time as they have to listen to music. Personally, it's a little exhausting for me, and most of the time in the day, I can't listen to music. I find it curious how someone can manage listening to 40 new songs in just one week and not forget anything about them in their schedule. Uh, yeah, so uh, this is uh, this is a good time for me to kind of talk about my uh, habits as a, a content creator that talks about music and does listen to probably more than 40 songs a week, new songs each week. Um, and that's because uh, it is a hobby of mine. Uh, this, what I do, Bowtie Media, is a hobby. That's something that I put in like real time into and thing I enjoy doing. Um, and that's how I have time. Uh, honestly, when I do the This Week in EDM recap, where I do about like 25 to 40 songs sometimes a week of new stuff, um, that takes an entire day to do. It takes an entire day to listen to the song, sometimes even multiple times, often multiple times, uh, and then write a mini review on the song, record the video, do all this, and put it up. Like it, it takes time to do this, and that's because it's something I enjoy doing. It's a hobby that I um, want to put time into and enjoy. Um, there are numerous times where I could be like gaming with friends late at night, but I will choose to listen to a new album instead because that's just what I want 
want to do in that given time. And so um, I think I've got a decent balance of like life and work and um, doing this bowtied music stuff. But I think it all depends on uh, how you as a listener want to listen to music. If you can't and don't want to listen to 40 new songs a week, you don't have to. You really don't have to. That's that's not a demand. Um, but as someone like myself, it is something that I enjoy doing uh, week to week. And um, yeah, I love it, which is why I do it. Chainsmokers are actually pretty solid. Whether it's pop with EDM influence or EDM with pop influence, they're pretty good at what they want to produce. Overall, I enjoy a lot of their stuff, specifically what they did with So Far So Good and the music they put out so far this year. Um, I would like... Oh, First of all, I don't think So Far So Good was great. I don't think it was their... Uh, actually, I, I could maybe get under and understand this is maybe their best kind of era. Um, but uh, for it's an interesting comment that you say because they are they produce well for what they're trying to do, for what they want to produce. And what they want to produce is commercial slop, I think, for the most part. It is meant to be uh, commercially viable and meant to get streaming numbers and not really meant to uh, be this intricate, this intimate, this emotional listen. Uh, it's it's meant to hit streaming numbers. And so in that sense, yes, correct. Um, they do that very well. <laughs> they produce that style of music very well. Um, but that comes with a caveat of they are uh, often sacrificing a more creative um, approach to production. And that's just how things go in a more commercial pop landscape. Um, for the most part, when you hit that commercial appeal, um, you lose your ability to be more creative with things. Unless you have this like crazy crazy backing behind you and fan base because um, again, you're at that point, it's a job for a lot of people. I've heard a lot of big artists say this actually, that music to them is more of a job rather than a passion um, once they hit a certain level because there's expectations to hit a certain thing and there's um, like, there's people counting on you there. You're, you're often a part of a bigger ecosystem and you have a huge team behind you that, um, that, that thrive and fail off of your own successes and failures. And, um, so I, I, for in that sentiment, you're like, yeah, like they, they do a good job producing what they do. I still don't think the music is overly fantastic. I don't think it's really meant to be, uh, mind blowing, but, um, yeah. I see music taught in a lot of schools, but not enough of them are teaching EDM or electronic music, and I think they should implement classes like that, maybe even a DJing class of some sort. Um, this uh, is really a hot takes episode in disguise of just learning about the life of Bowtie Media of Dakota, uh, because I actually did a DJ class uh, in my high school years in grade, I think it started in grade 10, 10, 11, and 12, um, what we called commercial music, an after um, school program where me and my best friends learned to DJ. Um, we There was a DJ that was brought in and he showed us how to mix and um, we had a little mixer and uh, we would spend time creating sets and doing that after school and that was what we did. Um, and that's how I learned to DJ for the most part. And I have my own set back here. I don't do it much anymore, but I, I know how to DJ and that's from school. I probably wouldn't have learned that or maybe even had the passion for EDM that I do today if I didn't have this class in particular. Um, that being said, also, I don't think schools need to teach EDM. I think schools need to teach um, music theory, at least those for the least for those that are interested, um, music theory and like basic instrumentation, because honestly, um, I wish I learned how to play like guitar or uh, piano because I know how to play the baritone saxophone, which is a bizarre, giant, freaking instrument that I will never play again after high school, and I haven't played in what, eight plus years now. And uh, I would way have rather learned piano or like guitar, but because I was in this concert band and jazz band, um, I learned this bizarre instrument. So if anything, I think it's like I, I learned basic music theory from from high school and school, but I would rather learn the music theory and then like I think everyone should learn like. Like piano at least a little bit or guitar at least a little bit um like we all kind of did with the recorder which i guess the recorder is a good introduction kind of instrument to music in general and actually it does teach a lot of music theory so recorder is good after recorder then we learn piano after piano guitar actually i don't know which one's harder i don't know either of them so um yes and no the 2020s trend of dark, gritty, warehouse, rave-type EDM is just a fad, and most of the people who listen to it will move on to the next shiny thing as soon as it comes along. It's cool occasionally, but wildly overdone, and all these uh, people do think they're Sigma listening to this emotionless, repetitive techno tech house 24-7. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with this one. I, I think I mentioned this in the last Hot Takes. Actually, go listen to that if you haven't or watch it. Um, I, I think techno is a fad. I, I really do. I think we're going to look back on this and be like, why was that a thing? Like, why was 
Enema um, at the at the Sphere at the Vegas Sphere. I, I think we will um, just because it does. It, it always comes in waves. There always will be a fad. There always will be a wave of genre of popularity of sounds that are popular. Like um, like I mentioned last time, think of like the early like uh, EDM days of like LMFAO and 303 and like these big sounds that were just so like. We were like, why? This, it sounds so bad in retrospect. But I, even then, I was like, this is the greatest thing ever. I love electronic music. And um, now I kind of look back and I'm like, that was silly. Um, so they're all fads, and they will be. And there will be another one soon. If I had to predict, ooh, I think dubstep's making a comeback in the commercial space would be my fad prediction. 